last session we covered proximal policy optimization, which you can think of it as an extension of the trust region method. It is a still a policy optimization framework. And then you wanted your new policy to be in a neighborhood of the old policy. This you can do it using trust region which was a little bit more complicated because you had to do linear approximation, conjugate gradient algorithm, and then quadratic approximation to your constraint. This one is much simpler. We just define R to be this uh, fraction here. And then you want to enforce R to be around one. And the way that you do it, you're gonna remove the incentive for R moving outside the interval one minus epsilon and epsilon in your objective. Then we moved on to model agnostic meta-learning. Why am I including uh, meta-learning here? Because so far, most of the reinforcement learning frameworks that we went through, or even the supervised learning frameworks, they required a lot of data. And somebody might say, we as human need much less data compared to what you're using to train your neural networks. And then a counter argument is that we as humans are multitask learners. We are very good at transferring whatever that we learned from one domain to another domain, from one task to another task. And the idea is, uh, can we mimic that behavior? Can we formalize it somehow and train our neural networks to do multiple tasks? So the objective is that you want to train a model, a single model, on a variety of different tasks. And then as soon as a new task comes in, you should be able to adapt really fast using, using very few training examples. So you can think of this as a few shot learning framework. The big idea is that you're gonna treat your tasks as training examples. So each task is gonna be a training example of its own. And each task is gonna have a bunch of training examples in itself. And the model that you're training, let's call that F, which is gonna take some observations and it's gonna output some outputs. This could be actions and this could be your policy, or this could be just what you do for your supervised learning, where you have supervision, supervision or labeled data on A. So under one umbrella, you can define what we mean by a task. We can formalize it. A task is just a set of these four objects. You need to know what is your loss function or your objective function. You're gonna look at observations, take some actions, go to the next state, take some other actions, etc., and do that for H episodes. You can have some initial distribution for your data or your initial state. And then you have some transition distribution that takes you from one state to the next state. And if you are doing reinforcement learning, your actions are going to have an effect on what you're going to see next. So this is for reinforcement learning. Under the same umbrella, if you set H to be one, so you have only one episode, that's going to give you supervised learning. You have a loss, which is a function of X and A. You have some initial distribution for your data, and then there is no next step. So under one umbrella, you can define tasks, supervised or reinforcement learning. This is neat. And then you're gonna have a distribution over tasks. That's what we mean by tasks being training examples. So you can have multiple different tasks, task one, task two, task three, et cetera. And each task is gonna have its own training data because you have an initial distribution and this transition distribution. So let's go back to the objective. First of all, you want to train a single model and then you want to train it on a variety of different tasks. So task one, task two, task three, task four. And what is your objective? You want to be able to adapt really fast to new observations and new tasks. So you want to generalize to new tasks. If you had only one task, you would parameterize uh, your decision, your model by let's say a neural network, you would take gradients of your loss function and then you would take gradient step gradient descent, but now you have multiple of them. And the idea is that you want to put the parameters of this model in a sweet spot so that a couple of uh, iterations of gradient descent on any new task is gonna give you good performance. So the idea is that you want to put the parameters of F in a sweet spot. And this is the way that you're gonna do it. You have 
some loss function for each task. So each task is going to have its own loss function. And then your entire meta learning objective is going to keep sampling from that distribution on the tasks. So now you're sampling from different tasks and then adding them up. And what do I mean by putting your parameters in a sweet spot? These are your parameters of your model. By sweet spot, I mean, if you take one step in the direction of the gradient or in the opposite of the direction of the gradient, this is gradient descent, it should give you a good loss function. So we are anticipating what we want to do next. From this task, what do we expect? We want one step of gradient descent to give us good performance, to give us good loss. So you're anticipating what you want to do with your task, what you expect. You want it to be able to adapt really fast. But now you have, a, you have an objective. It's a meta-learning objective that you are minimizing again. So you're taking gradients twice, one time here and then another time when you are minimizing this objective, this meta-learning objective. And it's exactly this observation that you want to optimize the model parameters such that one or multiple steps of your gradient descent on a new task will produce maximally effective behavior on that task. So basically your objective is to adapt really fast to new data, to be able to learn from few examples. This is gonna be clear when I show you a figure, but for now, let's formalize this a little bit more. And let's take a look at an example for regression, your loss function of your model is going to be the mean squared error between the predictions of the model and your observations, your labels. For classification, this is between two classes. You can have multiple classes, and then you're going to put a softmax. But here, this is going to be your objective when you're doing your classification. The big picture of the algorithm is that you have a distribution over tasks. You have two learning parameters or hyperparameters. One is alpha. The other one is beta when you're taking gradient steps or doing gradient descent on your meta objective. How does it proceed? You sample a task. So you're focusing on one task or multiple tasks. This could be a batch of tasks that you're focusing on. And then for each task, you're going to go ahead and compute the gradients of your loss function. And then let's say you have another, you're sampling another mini batch from your data, from your initial distribution. You compute the gradients. You create theta prime, which is what you're anticipating to happen after you perform your gradient descent. And then another round of gradient descent with another learning rate, beta, on your meta objective. Visually speaking, the objective of meta learning is not to be good at all of these tasks. Its objective is to put your parameters in a sweet spot so that as soon as some new data comes in, a new task, you can adapt really fast to that task. So the objective of meta learning is to put your parameters in a good location. And then you can do this for supervised learning, these types of problems, regression and classification, or you can do it for reinforcement learning. For regression, what's gonna happen? You pick a task, you sample some data. So this is for both regression and classification. You have input output data. You evaluate your loss on that data, and then uh, this loss, you're going to use these two objectives. So equation two is here, the regression. Equation three is the classification. You compute your gradients, and then you sample some new data set. These are your test data for that particular task. So you sample some test data, and then based on that test data, you're going to look at the performance of each of those individual models for this particular task. And then you do gradient descent over there. That's for supervised learning. For reinforcement learning, it's very similar. But now your data are in the form of sequences. X1 action, X2, the corresponding action, etc. based on your policy and your environment. You compute the gradients. You adapt. You anticipate what's going to happen if I take a gradient step. And then you sample a new trajectory based on this guy, theta prime. You look at your performance. This is as if you are testing your agent in the environment. You compute the corresponding losses, add them up for all of those different tasks, and then update the parameters. Any questions? I have a quick question. Sure. 
I just want to verify something. So the inner loop, when we sample data points, we only sample um, from one task at a time. So we'll have that corresponding loss, right? We're not sampling from multiple tasks. Uh, so it has, you have two for loops here. One is iterating over the tasks. Mm -hmm. And then the other for loop is you focus on that task and then you sample data from it. Yeah, so I mean that second one, the inner one, we only sample data for that particular task and use that particular loss. Yes. Okay. So the inner loop corresponds to anticipating what's going to happen if you do gradient descent for that particular task. And then the outer loop is uh, for you to actually update the parameters using the meta objective function. Makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. So for uh, the small inner learning rate alpha, um, we'll get roughly the same result if we just optimize the model to do well on all tasks, right? Uh, if you focus on one task, and if you use that alpha for this inner loop, yes, you would get the same performance if you do gradient descent. I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. Well, I was just thinking how much uh, added benefit you get for having this sort of inner loop thing. Because like, for instance, if I just set alpha to zero, then this would be the same as training my model <clears throat> to get to a point where it is averaging the performance across all tasks and is doing gradient descent on that objective. So I guess I'm wondering if this added complexity of saying, I'll take a small gradient step as well is actually adding that much benefit. Well, yeah, it's adding a lot of benefit. So this meta objective is not for you to be really good at uh, all of the objectives, all of these tasks. It is saying that if I apply gradient descent on that task, how much am I gonna learn? So the objective here is to put your parameters in a good location, in a sweet spot. If you set alpha to be zero, you are creating a model that is good at multiple different tasks. So actually this, this is crucial, having alpha to be non-zero. So we could have a model that was horrible at all tasks, as long as it could quickly become good at a target task. Yes, so that's a perfect way of putting it. So this model could be really hor horrible at solving these tasks, but then it's really quick. It's a quick learner. From very few examples, it's gonna adapt. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. I had one other question as well, um, which was this sort of general task framework that, I guess like it, down here we have these like this few shot supervised learning and then also for reinforcement learning. It, but this general model seems like it could apply to like supervised learning and reinforcement learning that you could have your model be good at adapting to both. But is that unreasonable given, I, I don't know, does that make sense? No, you're absolutely right. For instance, you can, uh, your agent, the supervised learning problem, if you want to think about it in terms of reinforcement learning, that's gonna be imitation learning, okay? So you just have a policy that is imitating what a human would do, and that's labeled data for that task. So yes, you're right. This is very generic. So you don't have to focus on supervised and then reinforcement learning. You can focus on both of them in one framework. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so one of your tasks could be uh, reinforcement learning. The other task could be classification. And that's perfectly fine. Any other questions? And some one minor detail before we move on is that if you look at this, you're taking the gradient uh, of your objective. So there is one gradient and then theta i prime, there is also another gradient over there. You have two options. One is to apply the gradient on top of the gradient, and that's gonna be costly. It's doable, but it's gonna be more costly, or you can just fix that. You can put a detach if you're doing a PyTorch, or you can just do stop gradients if you're doing TensorFlow here, so that the gradients, you're not taking gradients on top of gradients. And then that's going to be faster. So that's just an implementation detail. It's going to be faster. You are not taking into account the second order effects. So it's just the first order approximation for the sake of it being faster. Okay. In that case, we can move on. And uh, for the Objective, here I'm mentioning equation four. Equation four is basically your expected future return or expected future reward when you are doing reinforcement learning. And then you are taking your actions based on a policy. Okay, I guess we can move on. 